No right algebra one. Let's do this. So we are going to talk about absolute value functions and piecewise functions. <clears throat> so absolute value functions are kind of like our linear functions, only they're two different lines with opposite slopes. And why would that be? Hopefully you know that, okay, so we got absolute value. Just as a review, you know, we got like eight, right? The absolute value of eight is eight. And the absolute value of negative eight is eight. And why is that? Because they're both the distance from zero. Now, uh, they're both eight units away from zero. Now, absolute value can be distance of any sort. It doesn't have to just be from zero. Like, for example, if you want to find the distance between five and three, you would subtract five minus three. And you would find out that five is two away from three or three is two away from five. But what if you said three minus five? And then you say, wait a minute, does that mean they're negative two away? No, distance is always a positive number. So what we do is we just say, well, don't worry about it. Just take the absolute value. And then you'll get two in either case. So that's just a little bit about absolute value. But in algebra one, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about shifting the absolute value graph. So <clears throat> when it, so this blue function is the basic absolute value, and that's ABS function. And it's right here. F of X equals the absolute value of X. It is the line Y equals X on the right side, and it's the line Y equals negative X on the left side. And it makes this graph. And um, so you can see the pink one is the same graph. If we extended it out, it would look exactly the same. It's just moved. So if we look at the pointy part, it's called the vertex. So where is that vertex moved? It's moved down two and right or left six, right? Minus two and minus six. And so let's, let's write down two, left six. So here's how it goes. If we have the absolute value of X, and then we have something on the inside, and we have something on the outside. Down two means we're gonna put minus two on the outside. Left six means we're gonna put um, plus six on the inside. Now, as you go on, you may think, wait a minute, does he mean minus six because I subtracted six? I do not. So the left right shift is opposite of what you would think it would intuitively be. Okay, so the simple way of saying it, it is right here. It's A. X plus six on the inside and minus two on the outside. Okay. Now no one got this one. So let's look at same, um, same idea, but different setup. <clears throat> So you see here, we have a plus nine on the inside. So that means nine left. And we have a minus five on the outside. That means down five. Okay, so let's make a little table. So we have f of x equals, and we'll put an a on the outside. So x plus p plus c. So if if we have a positive B, then that is shifting left. If we have a negative B, that is shifting right. If we have a positive C, that is gonna shift 
the graph up. If we have minus C, that's going to shift the graph down. And that A on the outside, that is a size change. And we're not talking about that one in this uh, assignment, but it will come up. <clears throat> All right, so this is uh, this is a left by nine, or I mean, left by nine and and down five. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Now here we are. We have we have this one, and so you can now see that they have the same vertex. All right. But the transformed graph is wider than the basic function. So, hmm, I'll show you that. Oh, what's it called? Oh, there. All right. So, let's go back to our <clears throat> little chart here. So, if A is between 0 and 1, then that is called a stretch. And if A is greater than one, that is called a shrink. So stretch means the opening of the graph is wider. Shrink means it's more narrow than the basic function. Everything is compared to that blue basic function's shape and position. So we can see this is wider than the basic function, which means it's a stretch. So we're looking for a number between zero and one. Oh, I see that negative there. We have to also say if A is negative, that implies a reflection that the graph would open down. All right. So anyway, there's no reflection here that on the graph, and this is bigger than one, so that's out. There's out. Now three fourths looks promising, but there's no negative, and so I think it's D. I think that they're trying to say that this is G of X equals three fourths, which is between zero and one X. All right, so that is. Now we have the whole, the whole kit and caboodle, as they say. All right. And now it's on to piecewise functions. So piecewise functions are actually not too bad. They're just called piecewise functions because they have different pieces. And then the rules over here, uh, you call them domain rules. So if t equals 17, so if we're going to find h of 17, then we're going to use this top one. We're going to put the square root of 17 times 17, which incidentally is 17. If t is 19, so if we're finding h of 19, then we're not using this rule. We're using this rule. And there could be lots of different reasons why we do that, but anyway, so that's what it would equal if H was 19. And then if T is anything besides 17 and 19, then we use this function. So if it's 18, or if it's 16, or if it's zero, all of those are not 19 or 17, right? So then we're just gonna use this function 23 minus T. 23 minus 18, in that case, 23 minus 16, in that case, 23 minus zero, in that case. What is that? Four and five, four and uh, seven, and then that's the two, and that's five. So that's how it goes. So H of 17 is 17, according to that one. <clears throat> okay, oh, everyone got that right here. So you can see, oh, we better talk about this one. So now what are these fancy dancy little symbols? So this one, this little pitchfork type of thing means contained in. 
as in contained in the interval. And this is negative infinity to seven, negative seven. The parentheses mean not equal, you know, equal to. And the brackets mean or equal to. So like negative infinity to negative seven, not equal to negative seven. So if I substitute in negative seven, I'm not gonna use this one because it has a parenthesis. This one has a bracket. So that means it includes negative seven and negative and two. So anyway, I will use the second one for negative seven. And this one does not include two. So I would use the middle one for two and then anything above two, I'll use this function right here. So seven, positive seven is between two and infinity, right? So we're gonna put, we're gonna choose this one. Seven plus one, seven minus five. So that would be eight, and that would be two, 16. All right, piecewise functions, they're here to stay, okay. And so here's a graph of a piecewise function. So in order to graph it, we're just gonna need to graph um, each piece separately. So the way I do that would be, I'm gonna make a table using the endpoints and then if you want to do a point in between, you can, if it's not a line graph. So this goes from negative five to two. So then I'll just substitute negative two thirds times negative five, would be negative 10 over three, or positive 10 over three, or approximately 3.3 repeating. And then negative two thirds times two is negative four thirds, or approximately negative 1.3 repeating. So then I want to look for the graph that has the points negative five, 3.3, and also two, negative 1.3. Negative five, oh, oh, and it's including two, so that's a closed circle on two, but an open circle. Oh, an yeah, open closed circle. I'm sorry. Closed circles for both of these values. <clears throat> so two, negative 1.3, so it's gotta be B because this point does not have two, negative 1.3. All right, so give that a try and ask your questions. Did I go through all of them? Really? I did not do this one. All right, <clears throat> so let's graph the shift, the graph the function. So this is to the right, Five. So we're just going to take that vertex, go to the right five, and that's where the new function is. And oh, now this one is a little tricky because it has the shrink, right, <clears throat> in reflection. So it's down, I mean up. Sorry, it's getting late. Up one, but then the shrink is negative eight. So it's opening down. And the way I do uh, the, the shrink is, I think of it like a slope. So on either side of the vertex, we're gonna go over one and down eight, all the way to here. And it's symmetric. 
which makes it easier. Right, let me use a let me use a straight line tool. And that's it. All right, so give it your best try, post in the organizer, and we'll start this week out.